Welcome to the Acupuncture Outsider Podcast. My name is Richard Hazel, and in the time it takes for you to commute to or from work, I hope to have shared something of interest about orthopedic acupuncture using motor points, trigger points, myofascial slings, uh, neurofunctional acupuncture, segmental treatments, anything that crosses my mind that seems to be of interest. I hope you'll enjoy it. Hello and welcome to another episode of the Acupuncture Outsider. This is Richard Hazel and I wanted to share an interesting case, um, something that I've only seen a couple times in the past couple years, so it's a little odd and not expected and not at the forefront of my mind when I am assessing someone for pain, so I thought I'd mention it and hopefully it will help somebody else uh, who may be has found um, a an upper mid back pain that um, is difficult to resolve. So I have a patient who is a computer programmer, and very often she has a left upper mid back pain, and uh, it seems to be right around the area of. Uh, where the levator scapulae attaches to the upper border of the scapula, but just medial to that. And uh, at even sometimes it goes more uh, medial toward the longissimus thoracis area. So um, I, when I first saw her for her first visit, I thought, oh, this is just a you know, levator scap upper trap, middle trap sort of thing, and we'll have this knocked out in one or two visits. So what she, she had a really hard time, um, reproducing the pain for me to, um, confirm on palpation or, you know, with, um, you know, neck flexion, et cetera. Um, muscle testing wasn't going to tell me anything. And it was, you know, it was a pain that would come on when she'd been working a while or sometimes lying down in bed. Um, so I would push on things because when someone has a, a longissimus thoracis pain, it's very easy to find the spot that's causing the pain. When you press on it, it hurts. Um, when it's levator scapulae, so typically if they're sitting, you can have them go into neck flexion and they'll feel on the affected side, they'll feel more discomfort there because the levator is being stretched. So they feel either tight or pain or both. And same thing on left, right rotation. They'll, they'll feel more symptoms on the affected side. So it kind of seemed like it was that, but um, because she could feel some pulling when she would go into neck flexion. So she could feel something right around that um, medial border of the levator, right where it attaches to the upper scapula. So I treated it like it was a levator trap issue. And um, when, so when she was face down, I treated semispinalis capitis in the neck. I treated levator scap in the neck. I treated upper, middle, and lower traps uh, with motor points um, while face down. And I think I even treated the rhomboid um, minor area because it's right underneath that where that levator overlaps. And it seemed like uh, it freed things up and she was going to feel better. But then she came back because the pain was still there and it had not changed. It had not improved. So I thought, okay, maybe this is like a dorsoscapular nerve 
issue, maybe there's a bit of nerve entrapment underneath the levator and in that um, rhomboid minor area that's that's causing this pain that she can't reproduce uh, in the treatment room. And um, so I was pressing in that area, the rhomboids, and she said, yeah, that's where it gets sore. That's That's definitely like the area. So, and then longissimus uh, thoracis wasn't particularly painful, but I said, you know what, I'm just going to treat it. So the next time I did a similar treatment, added uh, longissimus thoracis, I did some trigger point dry needling of the levator scap right at that uh, uh, scapular border. Um, I think I did... Uh, trigger points on the upper and middle traps just in case because that middle trap also runs right over that same area. It's what it kind of is. When someone's saying it hurts here and they're pushing where they usually feel the pain, but they're not feeling it now, <laughs> it's a little trickier. Um, you can do some assessment and see what's tight. But if you can't reproduce pain, then you're kind of like hoping that the patient is telling you the correct uh, area and our back is like not very good on proprioception. So we don't always perceive exactly the right spot um, just by reaching back. So I was just going based on experience and, um, and treatment two was not successful. So she came back and she said, I don't know. It's, it still hurts, and it seems like it, I thought it felt better after the second treatment, and then it came back. So, I remembered the last time I had a patient with this same um, problem of, of the pain not going away. Um, this is a couple years ago. And I was kind of baffled. I was working with the shoulder mechanics, um, you know, anterior tilt of the scapula, thinking maybe I'm getting the right treatment, but it's the pain is coming back because of some scapular issues of internal rotation in the front, um, lats, pecs, um, pec minor, things like that, that are affecting the scapula, making the levator um, tight again because her pain would go that patient her pain would go up the side of the neck where the levator um, goes and um, so she really felt that she felt she felt it as neck and upper mid back pain and it was um, so I I remembered Dr. Travell's um, pain referral for the posterior scalene, which attaches to the second rib in the back. So I thought, you know, that could be it. The posterior scalene runs right along the same pathway as the levator scap in the neck, right along the same pathway as the upper trapezius, um, that, you know, when the upper trapezius has a taut band in the front that runs up the side of the neck. It runs right along the same place that the levator scap does. And I thought, you know, maybe it's a posterior scalene thing. So that previous patient two years ago, that's exactly what it was. It was resolved in, in one treatment. So this patient that I just saw this week, I, I thought, I wonder if it's possibly a posterior scalene Thing because she can feel some tension or pulling that feels familiar when she does neck flexion. And I think she even felt it more when she would laterally flex away from the problem. So I thought, okay, it's possible that it's a posterior scaling issue. Let's palpate. And I found a the posterior scaling was quite painful on palpation and it's not an easy one to find it's such a skinny little like guitar string of a muscle 
and it was you know right it runs right along where that levator scap runs if you're palpating around the level of c5 c5 6 um you'll feel it just lateral to the semispinous capitis right in that groove where you might go to treat the levator scapulae so i found that um very tender uh, painful area and i treated that and so she she said when i took the needles out i had okay let's have you sit up let's see if you can flex your uh, neck and see if it feels better she said oh no it actually hurts a little more and, and then we both laughed because uh, we both agreed it probably meant i got the right thing because she felt the she felt the referred pain into her mid back so then I treated something else that was going on with her elbow. And by the time she was ready to leave, she said, you know what? It's actually feeling better. I can tell that that feels um, different and better. So the pain that she had right after the needles came out were was just from basically treatment. Um, I think I got the right spot. So we're going to see. But I wanted to mention that because every once in a while, you probably will find this patient and you'll be cupping the upper mid back, the rhomboids, the trapezius, and you too will be wondering what is going on here? That it, Why is it not getting better? And, and why can't we palpate the area the patient says hurts and reproduce pain? And this is why, because it's a referred pain. It's referred from the posterior scalene attaching to the ribs. So you feel the pain in the upper mid back, but the problem is way up in the neck area. So, um, so, you know, and just palpating, by the way, just palpating sore, um, muscles in that area doesn't necessarily tip you off that it's going to cause mid back pain, you would just say, okay, well, it's the same side as what we were working on with the levator. So, you know, if you're thinking it's a levator and trap issue, then of course they have soreness when you palpate the levator in the neck. It's what you expect. It's the problem. You're going to treat levator. It's going to feel better. So it's easy to miss that very skinny little taut band that is the posterior scalene it's easy to, to miss it on palpation. You really have to um, strum around in there to find it, which is how I missed it. Because I could press on her neck and it, I could feel how it would relax after treatment. We could check that her left-right rotation looked really good. She could put her chin to her chest and feel that it had been um, released better. But when it's the posterior scalene and you treated the levator scapulae, it's not getting better. So that's what I had to kind of switch up for her. And I'm pretty sure I got it. Um, and if I'm wrong, <laughs> uh, in a future episode, I will uh, let you know. But I'm pretty sure I got it. Um, so that's it for this week. I just wanted to... Mentioned the posterior scalene as a possible mystery pain in the upper mid back because I've really only seen it a couple times in the past two years and it's not very common. But you too may see it or have seen it, and I would recommend you palpate for the posterior scalene uh, when you see this on a patient. Um, and you can knock it out pretty quick because it's a little skinny muscle and is not very resistant to a reset with motor point stimulation. Okay, so that's it for the week. Have a good week, and I will talk to you soon.